and welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about histamine intolerance, which is often caused by an imbalance between histamine intake or production and histamine breakdown in the small intestine or, or the large intestine. Histamine is a naturally occurring molecule that's produced in the body by the immune system or by our gut bacteria, and under normal circumstances in the digestive tract, Histamine is used to fight off parasites, such as infectious worms. Foods can also contain histamine or stimulate the immune system to release histamine. Because the digestive tract is one of the primary areas of histamine exposure, levels of histamine in the gut are controlled by an enzyme that breaks down histamine, known as diamine oxidase, or DAO. This enzyme is responsible for breaking down the histamine present in foods, any histamine produced by the bacteria living in our gut, and histamine released into the intestines by the immune system. However, if this enzyme becomes impaired due to certain medications, if a person does not produce enough DAO, or if a person has excessive histamine buildup in the intestine, a variety of symptoms resembling an allergic reaction may manifest. These effects are varied and can affect tissues other than the gastrointestinal tract, making histamine-containing food intolerances difficult to diagnose. Symptoms of histamine intolerance include nausea, diarrhea, headache, nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, asthma, low blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, hives, itching of the skin, eyes, ears, and nose, and also swelling. Histamine intolerance has also been associated with fatigue, irritability, and most commonly, heartburn, indigestion, and acid reflux. Importantly, consumption of histamine-containing foods is reported to be a major trigger of irritable bowel syndromes associated symptoms in many people with this condition. The primary cause of histamine intolerance seems to be impairment in the function of the DAO enzyme rather than excessive histamine consumption. Gastrointestinal diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease result in damage to the cells that line the intestines and impair the ability of these cells to produce DAO. Certain medications, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, and some antidepressants also inhibit DAO and can lead to histamine intolerance. Mutations in the DAO gene can result in histamine intolerance also, and these mutations have also been associated with food allergies, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and gluten sensitivity. Inflammation, which commonly accompanies these bowel disorders, can also cause impairments in the function of DAO. Even people without a histamine intolerance can suffer from histamine-related symptoms when they consume foods containing massive amounts of histamine. However, people with impairments in DAO function seem to be much more sensitive to foods that contain even low levels of histamine. One of the most frequently reported symptoms of people with impaired DAO function and histamine sensitivity is headaches and migraines. So if you frequently suffer from migraines, you might want to try a histamine-free diet in order to alleviate your symptoms. But there are also some natural supplements you can take at any time throughout the day that really assist with histamine modulation. Histamine and related compounds are present in many foods, and the concentration of these molecules increases as foods age. This is because bacteria convert the amino acid histidine into histamine as the food ages. This also means that foods produced using fermentation typically end up being quite high in histamine. So foods like aged cheese, sauerkraut, wine, and processed or cured meats can be highly problematic for people with histamine intolerance. The histidine found in leftover meat can quickly be used by the bacteria on the meat, even if it's refrigerated, which will likely result in increased histamine concentrations in leftovers. Similarly, food that's been spoiled due to microbial contamination also frequently contains high levels of histamine. Scombroid poisoning can make even healthy people very sick, and it typically occurs when a person consumes spoiled fish and has an adverse reaction to the high amounts of histamine in the fish. There are other foods that can induce symptoms in people with histamine intolerance, even though they don't contain histamine. Citrus is an example of this type of food, as it's been shown to stimulate mast cells to release histamine. Certain alcoholic beverages like red wine contain high levels of histamine and also inhibit the DAO enzyme making them particularly important to avoid for people with histamine intolerance. So there's another reason there to give up alcohol. Histamine intolerance is often thought to be a food allergy, 
but because this intolerance is not mediated by the traditional allergic pathways, allergy tests will come back negative. So remember that for those with histamine intolerance, it's important to begin with a strict low histamine diet and slowly reintroduce foods in order to determine if they are responsible for histamine-related food intolerances. So this would be another example of doing an elimination diet where you try to determine what foods exactly are making you sick. So I mentioned earlier there are some supplements you can take that would help with histamine intolerance and some of the more well-known ones of course include vitamin C and the bioflavonoid quercetin. Vitamin C in fact has been known to actively shut down histamine and even the bioavailable sulfur compound MSM or methyl sulfonyl methane which is popular for joint pain and, and hair growth. One of my favorite ways to deal with histamine is of course through enzyme therapy and the one enzyme you really want to focus on if you're looking to alleviate histamine is amylase which is your pancreatic enzyme that breaks down carbs and sugar. So every time you eat carbs and sugar pancreatic amylase will be responsible for digesting that primarily. Some of us, like me, are deficient in amylase. When I learned about my amylase deficiency, I finally had an answer for why, for so many years, I craved sugar endlessly, and I had blinding headaches and endless seasonal airborne allergies. These are all signs of low amylase in the pancreas. So taking a digestive enzyme with every major meal and also on an empty stomach is really something you want to consider here because it takes enormous pressure off the body. And if it's a good enzyme, it should have a high amount of amylase along with the protease for protein and lipase for fat and cellulase for fiber and cellulose. There are even some therapeutic blends of amylase that are a little bit higher than what you would find for digestion. And so you would want to take these on an empty stomach between meals. And these therapeutic amylase blends can really help to alleviate the common symptoms of seasonal airborne allergies, which are often, again, driven by high histamine. And that would be the watery eyes, the runny nose, all those things. So look for a therapeutic enzyme with high amylase. And if you're eating a meal that's predominantly simple carbs and sugar, the Amylase in that enzyme blend can really help to break that down effectively. Amylase is not a license to eat all the sugar that you want, but if you are going to eat a meal like that, try taking your therapeutic amylase with that meal in addition to your comprehensive digestive enzyme for additional support. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.